Hello everyone and welcome to my channel MI Tutorials. So whenever you receive an unknown data set which you are not familiar with, you are required to explore the data to understand if there are any missing values, if there is any bad data present in the data set or if there are any anomalies present in the data set. Now there are tools within Power BI which help us understand the quality and statistics of the data set. So this is what I will be teaching you today. So let's get started with this tutorial. Now I have loaded the sample data set into Power BI and I am in query editor right now and I would like to understand the quality of the data set and also the statistics of the numerical fields. Now this is an unknown data set and I am not familiar with this data set and I want to explore what is in here for me. So let's get started. So when you are here in the Power Query editor, there is this little green bar that you see. You might have not paid attention to it. but it is giving us some information for us to know about our data. Now when we look at the column account ID over here, you see that there is a green bar over here and the entire bar over here is green when compared to the bar here with the tenure column. Now the reason why the entire bar here is green is because the 100% of the rows in that particular column are valid. There are no issues or errors in that particular column. Now when I hover over the tenure column over here, you see that there are 99% values which are valid whereas there are 1% rows in the tenure column which are null or empty values. Likewise, if I scroll towards my right over here, you will see that there is this cashback column which have been color graded in two different colors. One is we have the red color and then there are white and green bars which says that there are errors in that particular column. Now, how do we identify these errors and fix them? So when you go to the view tab, there is something called as column quality, column profile and column distribution. This entire thing is called column profiling within Power BI. Now, when I click on column quality, let's take a look at what is the information that we get for these rows. Now, when we hovered over this green line over here, we saw how many of them were valid, error and empty. Now, likewise, it gives similar information, but this time you don't have to hover over the green line to understand how many are valid, empty or have any errors. In this case, if I look at the tenure column over here, it is saying that there are more than or 1% of the rows which are empty or blank, right? Now, one thing to keep in mind over here is when you are looking at it for the first time, you can take a look at this message over here which says column profiling is based on 1000 rows. Now it is important for you to understand that right now whatever information that you are seeing over here is only based on the top 1000 rows of your data set. If you have a large data set, what you need to do is you need to come over here and select column profiling based on entire data set so that whatever information that you see over here is based on the entire data set and not just on those thousand rows. Now let me scroll towards the right and let's take a look at the revenue growth year on year column and it says that there are errors present in this particular data set. Now I have around 11,000 rows and I don't really know where that particular error is and I don't even know what that particular error is. When you are working with a large data set, it is difficult to find where that particular error is. So what you can do is you can right click on this column and select keep errors. So when you do that, you will only be able to see the errors present in that particular data set Let's click on this error and it says that we, we couldn't convert to number because there's a dollar sign present in that particular cell. Now to fix this, what we really need to do is let me get rid of this step which was added for kept errors. I'm going to go back to the revenue column. And now to fix the errors in this particular column, what I will do is I'm going to change this back to the text data type and I'm going to click on replace current and then I'm going to right click and select replace values. I'm going to enter the dollar sign here that I need to find and replace with zero and then click on OK. Once this is done and then I'm going to go back here and change this to whole number and now you will see that we don't have any errors and all of the values here are now 100% valid. Now let's go back to the view tab and let's check in the 
box here for column profile. So what the column profile does here is basically gives you the distribution of that particular column. In this case, the distribution looks something like this. And we can clearly see that this particular data is right skewed. And you can see that the maximum values that we see here are 14, 13, 15, 12. Likewise, we have the 26, 27, 28, 0 and 4, which have the lower number of values. And you can also see the statistics of that particular column. We have 11,260 rows. There are distinct 20 values here. There are no unique values present in this. We have change the dollar sign here to zero it's saying that there are three zero values the minimum value is zero the maximum value is 28 the average is 16.18 the standard deviation the even odd etc and now let's take a look at another column here called as account segment and you can see the column statistics over here and you can also see the value distribution looking at the value distribution chart over here you can say that the maximum customers are with the account segment super followed by regular plus and then hni whereas super plus here have the least amount of customers now this is extremely helpful when you are trying to analyze your data set and now let's take a look at the last feature here of column profiling which is column distribution i'm going to check this box over here and let's see what this has to offer and now if i look at the account id column it is now telling us there are 11,260 distinct values and of them all 11,260 values are unique and if we look at the churn column over here it says that there are two distinct values and there are zero unique now the difference between distinct and unique is maybe i'll Take an example of CC contacted last year column over here to help you understand. There are 45 distinct values present in the data set. Now, when I say distinct, I'm talking about the numbers that are present in this column. 4, 5, 6, 7. So, each number over here is a distinct value. So, there are 45 such distinct values present in the data set out of which five are unique. Now, why five are unique? So when I come back over here, let me filter for the number four or let me filter for number five. You will see that the five value is repeating about eight times in this particular data set. Now, this is not considered as a unique value. Likewise, if I come and select four over here, you see that four is appearing only once in this particular data set. Hence, number four value is considered as a unique value. Likewise, there are five such values in the data set which are appearing only once and they are not repeating again in that particular column. So this is the difference between distinct and unique. And we can also see the distribution here for the other column. Likewise, I have five distinct values in the gender column. Now this should trigger us to understand why are there five distinct values and that's when you go ahead and check the reason for five different distinct values or five distinct values are because F is also denoted for female in this case. So there is some work for us to do over here to merge or replace the values of female with F or replace F with female so that appears as one category. So this is how column profiling can help us understand our data set, help us understand the quality of the data set that we have and also help us understand the statistics of the numerical columns present in our data set. So with this we've come to the end of the tutorial. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you. You've learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.